Sending back and clear the cotton with another 19 break. Saudi Arabia.
fighter. There was no question of this being a pure air-to-air -air fighter. Air to ground missions, anti-shipping strike, and reconnaissance are all on the menu. We are with about 10 minutes between air-to-air -air sorties and less than 20 for air to ground. Now, Mark, the first of the slow speed, what we call high angle of attack passes. Yeah, so the uh, the technique here is the, the stick is fully off. Uh, flying at the required angle of attack, and if you look very, very carefully at the canards, see how furiously they are manoeuvring and moving, not necessarily being run by the pilot in order to keep the aircraft in the of the Vigan, which was able to land in an extraordinarily short distance, but did so with a great amount of sound and fury with the uh, engagement of reverse thrust and heavy braking, but none of that with the Gripen could very, very easily have come to a stop. Yeah, just a tiny bit of uh, aerodynamic braking there with the, uh, the canards uh, pushed forward uh, to use as air brakes, and the aircraft is uh, speed under control in no distance at all. And it is with great pleasure that I give you the Royal Air Force Chinook Display Team. With the way behind him, Jim enters the first of the mini today, the roller coaster. Jim brings the aircraft 50 degrees and nose up from the horizontal. and pushes the aircraft down towards the ground. Using the energy from the last manoeuvre and 10,000 pounds of sharp horsepower, he then enters the next nose over. Pushing the cyclic forward, Jim gets a full view of the ground 
and then brings himself down to the hard deck of 100 feet. demonstrates the agility of the aircraft and the end will be followed by a nose down quick stop. This maneuver is used in operations throughout the world and it's been used in Afghanistan for Mertz training as well. This is normally used when the troops are spotted late on in the maneuver and can bring the aircraft from 120 knots to a standstill on a sixpence. Josh was out tape Essex boy and before he joins us he was a first responder and initially became an air trafficker. Having experienced the uh, challenges of an air traffic control, he then rebranched to become a wizard. Assisting with the display today, we have a team of engineers. By Ten Alliance is able to supervise by Sergeant Connie and Connie to make sure he doesn't make any mistakes. The aircraft will now execute the Gorney climb. This was used in Kosovo after dropping off later the troops. Our looks will be a morale boost when climbing up the steep valleys of uh, Gorney Baku. Once at the top of the climb will be a 400 degree descending spiral turn to come from crowd left to crowd right. The Chilip was first deployed on operations in 1982. And the famous Bravo November was deployed down to the Falkland Islands, and since then, the aircraft has been in constant operations throughout the world. The aircraft's versatility has been demonstrated both in Afghanistan, where it was used as a flying hospital. Its versatility also seen in the UK, where it's used for MACA, military aid to the civilian authorities, with Wade Bridge. Its humanitarian roles have been seen in Operation Rumen in the Caribbean. will be guiding the pilots. There are no wing mirrors, so they will be keeping them on the centre line of the runway. The aircraft will come up to crowd centre before giving a little flash of the landing lamp and away from the crew net. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please wave to the 2023 Royal Air Force Chilean Display Team. And we'd also like to say thank you to our sponsors, Brightling and Boeing, who enable us to come and uh, we've got three bees for you at the RAF Experience Village.
managing the EABH team representing the Harrier running in from the right with the F-35 team. Legendary chief designer Sidney Cam saw that potential. It was up to company designer Ralph Cooper to develop the P-1127 strike aircraft prototype to use this new system of what was called thrust secretary. So in for their break, from the right, the EA-V8B and the F-35B. in the last few days to see news that the RAF intends to exercise off airfield operations with both the F-35B and Typhoon forces because this very much takes us back to ask the real death for the Harrier in the first place. So the F-35B is passed us at the flow first.
26 degrees nose high here. That is correct. started in early 1945. Their speed 
was far in excess of the piston engine fighter opposition they were coming up with. The top speed of the Mi-262 was about 560 miles an hour. Compare that with the P-51D Mustang at 440 miles an hour. And a very good description of just what it was like for an Allied fighter pilot to come up against a Mi-262 in combat for the first time was provided a few years ago by a P-51 pilot veteran of the American 55th Fighter Group, Richard G. Gibbs. I remember one time I was coming back from a, a bombing mission in the vicinity of Germany and uh, I was about 30,000 feet and I looked down there and I saw a 262 at about 20,000 feet uh, exceeding the red line of the airplane trying to catch that jet when he just pulls up in a vertical climb and disappears. I have no way I'm going to catch him. Still, they were insufficient Mi-262s to make a material difference to the Luftwaffe's efforts. An orange emergency flares is lit up. This serves both to see where the survivor is and also gives out precious indication about wind direction and intensity and fundamental element during the rescue operation. Let's virtually enter the coffee to live. 
an ex very experienced aviator. He has flown operations on both Harrier and Typhoon. On the left hand side of Red 1 is Red 3, flight attendant Tom Hansford. Tom is also in the first year of the team and he has flown Typhoon operationally. Once again at over 400 miles per hour, 4 to 5 Gino lead at heights of approximately 5,500 feet, with the aircraft now slowing to only 110 to 120 knots. This makes the controls a lot less responsive, making the formation keeping even more difficult. the Apollo space missions and the Eagle from the Eagle landing craft. On the far right hand side is Red 4, Flight Lieutenant Ollie Suckling. Ollie once again is in his first year on the team, a former Tornado GR4 pilot and also a qualified flying instructor on the Hawk Team R2. Those familiar to the airshow world will also know Ollie as he used to fly with the North Wales based Strike Master pair. want to make it too easy for the rest of the team so the blue and red smoke comes on and he bends the formation around to the right makes it even more difficult for red seven and eight to make them
Once again, the single pair run up to about a thousand feet as they turn hard back towards the spray line for their final manoeuvre of the show. as he rolls around the rest of the formation, leaving the infinity symbol in the sky for the infinity break. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Please put your hands together for the 2023 Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team. It's the Red Arrow!